Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2023 Subaru Forester, we're going to be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. Before we do that though, let's take a minute, check it out, and make sure it's going to work for you. So when it comes to these Subarus, you know, people use them to do a lot of different things. You see them pulling trailers around, using accessories, and just about everything in between. Uh, so by adding a hitch back here, it's really going to help open up your opportunities on what you're going to be able to do with your Forester. There are several hitches available for the Forester, and I guess you can categorize them in a couple of groups, one of them being visible, like this one, so you'll be able to see the whole cross tube underneath the vehicle, um, which honestly on something like the Subaru I don't think looks too bad at all. Uh, it sits kind of further up. Especially with the e-trailer one, it has this matte black finish, almost matches the plastic on the bumper, um, and doesn't look out of place by any means. But if you're looking for something uh, even more clean, there are a couple hitches available that actually sit behind your fascia here, and really the only thing you'll be able to see is the receiver tube opening, so that's always an option for you as well. This is going to be a class 3 hitch. So it has the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is a good thing. That's a really common size. A lot of different things will work with it. It is going to use that standard 5 8 pin. Keep in mind though, pin and clip doesn't come included with the hitch. If you need one, not a huge deal. You can always grab it right here at e-trailer. Or a lot of times too, if you end up buying a new accessory, they'll come with one. Just something to look out for there. The safety chain openings are easy to get to and they're pretty big. So just about any style of hook that you might have on your trailer should work out just fine. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 525 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. It's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. Uh, it's a pretty good number. Should be able to use pretty much any size bike rack or cargo carrier you want to. Just give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds. That's the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have in or on it. I do always like to recommend though, it's never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure that your Forester can handle that much weight safely. We'll grab a couple measurements now. These will help us figure out what type of accessories will work best. Go from the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening. It's going to be about 14 and a half inches. So if you plan on towing, you could probably use a ball mount that has a straight shank or one with a slight rise in it. Probably uh, an inch or two would work in most scenarios. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about four and a half inches, which is pretty good. So you shouldn't really run into any issues here, but if need be, you can use that to help figure out exactly if any of those folding style accessories you might have can be stored upright without hitting the back of your Forester. So at the end of the day, if it were me and I was going to put a hitch on my Forester and I was okay with having one that is visible, this would be the one I would go with hands down. I think it looks the best out of all of them. Um, I'm just a fan of the matte black finish, honestly. And it'll handle pretty much whatever you want to throw at it too. So can't ask for too much more there. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad. Um, you take a panel down, small panel down on this side, which is easy, and then you do have to lower your exhaust some, which isn't a big deal. Um, nothing really to it there. Get the hardware in the frame and bolt the hitch up. So it shouldn't really run into too many issues, but if you'd like to hang around, feel free to. We'll go ahead, pull into the garage, and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're going to be underneath the back of our Forester, and we're going to start uh, by removing this underbody panel here on the driver's side. So along the edge, you're going to have three push pin style fasteners. With these, you can just take a flathead screwdriver, pry down on the head, and then you're able to pull the whole base out. So we'll get those. And then kind of up behind our rear wheel, we're going to have a couple more. You'll have this one here. Essentially works the same way. And then a little bit closer to the edge of the wheel well, you'll have this one as well. And on the bottom of your frame rail, you're gonna have two 10 millimeter head bolts. We can remove those. 
we should be able to take this panel and work it out from underneath of our vehicle here. We need to lower our exhaust. Uh, I like to support it first so that way we can kind of control how fast and how far you let it come down. So I'm just going to take a strap and run it from side to side here. It's going to be a total of three isolator hangers that we need to remove. Here's one of them. Uh, you want to spray it down with some soapy water or some type of lubricant. Makes it a lot easier. And then you can just take a pry bar or big screwdriver, whatever you got, and work one end of that hanger off. The other one is just going to be kind of in this area on the other side of our muffler. Here's where that other one is located. And we'll use that same technique. to get it removed. Following the exhaust towards the front of the car, there's one more hanger. Once we get that one pried off, we can loosen up our strap a little bit and let the exhaust come down a little ways. We'll get our heat shield removed. So there's gonna be four 10 millimeter head screws, one in each corner. can lower this down from underneath the car. In the bottom of your frame rail, you're gonna have four rubber plugs and we can just pop these out with a screwdriver. And from this point on, whatever we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also gonna do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Moving back to our heat shield, we're gonna need to create some openings in it that way our hardware can pass through. And so, there's two little dimples on it that you can use. Um, and I'm just gonna take a hole saw and drill them out. Before we uh, worry about putting our heat shield back up, we need to get the hardware in the frame rails um, because if we reinstall this right now, it'll actually block that access hole. This is going to be our access hole. Well, the problem is the hardware that needs to go up in the frame, the spacer block and the bolt, it's too big to fit up through there. So what we're gonna do is just enlarge this a little bit. That way this will be able to pass up in there. Um, if you have uh, a power tool with some type of grinding bit, that would really speed things up. But thankfully, you don't need to remove a whole lot of material. So if you have a hand file or something, it's definitely manageable. So I'll open it up uh, and check it occasionally until those bolts are able to pass through. So able to get this opened up a little bit. And this is exactly what we're looking for. You know, spacer block can fit through there easily and the carriage bolt uh, will be able to go through as well. So to actually get the hardware in the frame, we have our three attachment points and you wanna take the coiled end of your fish wire and start with this hole here closest to the back and push that through towards the front and out through the opening Sometimes you get lucky, it'll drop right out. Other times you might have to reach up there and kind of help it. Well, you could take a spacer block, put that over the whole wire, thread on a carriage bolt, feed it up into the frame, pull it down until it drops through. And I will use that same technique and that same hardware combination for our other two attachment points there. Once you have all the hardware in place, since we did expose some bare metal there by enlarging that hole, 
I'm just gonna come back with a paint stick and get a layer of paint over it just to help against rust and stuff. Also use spray paint, whatever you got. Something's better than nothing. And the rest of the hardware that, that we're gonna use to actually secure the hitch. So once we get everything up in place here in a moment, uh, the bolts will pass through the hitch. You can remove one of the pull wires and put on one of these flange nuts. Back on the uh, passenger side here, we need to get our heat shield in place and so you can actually feed the pull wires through those holes that we opened up and then we can re-secure this the opposite way that we removed it really with one exception um, don't reinstall that bolt there because it'll interfere with the hitch so we'll just put these three back in. Now if you can get someone to give you a hand with this part, it makes it a lot easier. But you're going to take the hitch and you can take your pull wires and just drop them through the corresponding holes in the hitch. So get this lifted up, kind of feed the wires, you know, pull on them as you're doing it to keep them straight. Once all the bolts pass through, you can remove one of the pull wires, take your flange nut, and we want to get at least one started on each side, hand tight, that way the hitch will support itself. Quick pointer, if you're having a hard time getting the nut started because the bolt wants to push up, you can always just apply a little side pressure to the bolt and that'll help keep it steady, making it a lot easier to get the nuts started. But once you have them uh, all in place and hand tight, you can come back with a three quarter inch socket and snug them all down. You wanna make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. We'll go ahead and resecure our exhaust. So when you put it back up, you can just re-lubricate the hangers and then just push them back on uh, by hand. And once you got all three of them back on and it's supporting itself, go ahead and get the strap removed. I went ahead and reinstalled our underbody panel the opposite way that we removed it, really with one exception, just that attachment point. Then I have to worry about putting a bolt back in it because the hitch is covering it up. So not a big deal, this thing's rock solid, not going anywhere. And with that complete, that will finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2023 Subaru Forester.